All right, well, fellas, welcome into this second episode of Beyond the Three featuring B. J E. I'm your host, Evan Let's Barron, go. alongside my colleagues Brian Salmon, Jesse Merrick. Mm -hmm. We've been a little bit absent these last few weeks, but you know, yeah, we're, we're picking it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're going to start with the hottest team in town right now, the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah. Are on a two game winning streak after taking care of the Toronto Maple Leafs. 4 2 tonight. Cody yeah. Glass gets his first career multi point game. Mm -hmm. This team's firing all certain cylinders, guys. What? What, are they going to keep it going? Jesse, you were there tonight. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, they got a tough slate coming up. San Jose is one of, if not the hottest teams in the NHL. They've won six out of their last seven on air. I said it wrong. I said they won seven. Oh, but, no, um, we're going to call you <laughs> out on that. Yeah, right. got to call myself out. got to keep it louder, man. Okay. okay. Uh, they're also averaging three and a half goals a game right now. And it's against some good teams that they played against, too. Um, a couple of bad ones sprinkled in there too, but I think it'll be really interesting to see how Vegas does in this one. They played two really dominant periods of hockey in the first two periods of this one today. Yeah, the third, they were like yeah, hanging over your was, life. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> iffy. Like Toronto made a push. I, I don't know what the shot differential was in the third period, but Toronto didn't have that many going into the third. Yeah. And they were about even at the end of the game. Oh, uh, wow. I think it was 37 to 34, uh, Vegas outshot them. So Toronto really made a push there. Okay. Um, so. We'll kind of see how it goes. I mean, they again, they've been playing really well. Even before they started getting these last two wins, they were still playing decently well. It was just like puck management. And a lot of times, like, goals no are not luck. going in, you know? Yeah, again, puck luck, it's that thing that Galan always says. Well, I mean, Toronto's a pretty good team, too. Yeah. I mean, they got Tavares, they got Matthews. So it wasn't exactly. like, you know, they were just going up against some nobody. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of big things with that. One, Toronto, the five-game losing skit that the Golden Knights were on, yeah. Toronto was the team that had gave them their first loss on that losing streak mm -hmm. in Toronto. I think November 7th it was. Toronto coming into the game had a five game losing skid, which was currently the longest losing streak in the NHL at the time. But, and I even heard uh, Gary Lawless, the, uh, one of the guys for um, the <clears throat> Golden Knights, he was asking the guys questions about how the people in Toronto were going crazy that the Maple Leafs, man, the coach is on the hot seat. They're playing really bad. And uh, what's like going on with them? I think. No, but they're, um, they had almost as many points as the Golden Knights had. Yeah. They had like 23 points. Like, Right now, <laughs> Toronto has 22 points, and they're one, two, three, four, five. They're fifth in the, the Atlantic, but the Atlantic has the Bruins, yeah. the Panthers, Montreal. So it's not like they're playing terrible. No. Nah. You know what I mean? But, yeah, all right. So It, it is funny to see that, <laughs> the discrepancy in it all. Yeah, they had, tw <laughs> they had 22 points entering. The Golden Knights had 23 points entering, yeah. and they're talking about firing the coach in Toronto. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, the Golden Knights, they balled out, man. They plucked they did. out. The thing that I thought's been kind of interesting, too, at least just in these last two games, mm -hmm. uh, I think it was four third-period goals in the win over Calgary, two tonight, really two when they really oh, needed yeah, them yeah. as well. And they had goal? Yeah, oh, man, that was, I mean, after he whiffed on one of them, even Gallant afterwards said he was like, I think he was a little embarrassed after that one. He should be. He had, you know, he was charging on it right there and just, it was, it was bad. <laughs> uh, but then he converted on it later, a huge goal. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, it's like they were struggling big time in the third period leading up to that win against Calgary. Um, and the discrepancy was like nuts. In, in the first period, they're the top in the NHL in goal scored. Yep. Yep. In the third period, they were like, I can't remember what that happened, like but I think it was like... 15th or 20th or something I think it was like 27th, I think. Oh, okay. I think. I could be wrong, but it's, it's in the 20s. Yeah, it was bad. Um, yeah, so it was really bad. But now they've got, in their last two games, they've got six goals in the third period. Yeah. And, and, That's huge. And um, some guy, what's his name? Um, Flurry. Yeah, he's kind of good at the hockey thing. Man, he, <laughs> yeah. he, he gets yeah. his hockey on, Yeah, man. he does. I mean, How about that save he made tonight? Man? It was <laughs> unbelievable. He had he has now has, has 67 saves in his last two games, but like the only one that anyone is going to talk about is that one. And he made an insane save on Sunday with the skate. I like, know. And that one, it's like, <clears throat> sorry, I'm fighting a cold. It's like, get over that one. <laughs> this dude just made an insane like center fielder <laughs> like diving <laughs> catch. I want to see the memes on that. Oh, it was nuts. Oh, I man. mean, even in the locker room afterwards, they were asking Flurry, and you know, Flurry obviously likes to joke around. He's a nice guy, but like, he was giggling in there. He's like, and he even said, he's like, you know, you kind of giggle a little bit, you laugh, you're like, hey, <laughs> I'm glad it didn't go in. And it's yeah. like, really, that's your reaction yeah. after you just made an unbelievable save that that's going to be played when he goes into the Hall of Fame over and over again. I'm yeah. sure. Man, if if that, and I said this on the air tonight, if that save is not number one on Sports Center tonight, has to be then they're doing something wrong. Yeah. They're absolutely doing something wrong. If that's not the top play, like, come on. I mean, he literally, yeah. he was like, 
Yeah, he was diving. Yeah, and like even the players, they were all laughing too. I mean, yeah. I think it was Merrill, if I remember right, that said, you know, he's worth the price of admission every night. Yeah. You know, uh, on Sunday, Schmidty told us that, uh, you <laughs> know, it's great. like being a player on a on a uh, basketball bench when you're in college, when a guy slams it or hits a three, everyone's like, oh, like and holding the back. <laughs> and, and, I mean, like, I can't imagine, I didn't even look at the bench, but I can't imagine what it was like when he made that save. Glass said it was nuts. He's yeah. like, it was like a, I think mini sticks, I think he was talking about like a little kid's type of okay. stuff that you see kids doing. Um, and every said everybody obviously lost it, but it was you, nuts. You know what's funny about that, like Evan, especially like when you when you see the guys in the locker room, especially uh, Glass <clears throat> tonight when they ask him about Flurry save, but yeah. he's talking and you know giving you the lines and everything else. So how about that Flurry save? He's like, yeah, like everyone's face just lights mm-hmm. up. They start smiling. They get so happy just talking about it because they're they're literally like fans talking about what he's doing. They're like, man, that, that was so sick. Like, yeah. oh my God, oh my God. Oh yeah, it's crazy. I, like, I kind of, the thing that came to mind while we were talking about this was the Blake Griffin dunk on um, one of the guys, oh. I think it was Perkins, it, OKC. Uh, I was at yeah. that game as like an intern or whatever. And I was up really? In, yeah, I was up in the press box. And you know, like That's the right. stigma, you're not supposed to cheer in the press box. It was like one of my first games that I covered. <laughs> and he's, wham! And I was like, oh! <laughs> like, I just went nuts. And everybody in the press box was like, looking at me, like that's what I did tonight, and thankfully it was so loud in there, like nobody really cared. Kind of at the Knights games too, people don't yeah. care too much. But it's, it's gonna be some kind of newspaper yeah. guys looking at you crazy. Yeah, like, oh, like old my, Brian's favorite word, some old fuddy duddies giving you the, <laughs> the bad looks there for cheering. Jesse's the, uh, bringing fuddy duddies back, <laughs> Kevin. I am, I am. So they got the Sharks this <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Big, very rivalry game. We got oh, Vader yeah. Kane going around this time, so we might see some battle between him and Reeves. Yeah. Yes. So. What, what are you guys thinking about this one on Thursday? Muffin Man. The well, Muffin Reeves Man. and Evander Kane, he, he said it multiple times, but out of all the people in the NHL that he's fought, that he's played against, he's the only guy that he doesn't like. Yeah. Like, that yeah. he literally does not like. Yeah, yeah, he does not like that dude. Uh, and you know about Kane here in Vegas. He got that five hundred thousand oh, yeah. dollar marker that's sitting out there. Just think about how it's it's going to be loud in there. You need you're off, but you need to be going. You need to go to that game. Family in town, man. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, man. My, I, I, the game. I, the yeah, I wish. You want to loan me like fifteen hundred bucks? I got like eight <laughs> people coming into town. It's it's gonna be a lot of people, so I can't go. I want to. I really want to go. I'm it's gonna have to going to it. be bananas in there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Mm. it I kind of wanted them to be on a winning streak so the Golden Knights could beat them, and it would feel good for like for. Vegas. Vegas, but it doesn't matter yeah. what's going on with the Sharks. If they beat them, they're going to be bananas anyway. Well, so. Six out of the last seven. I mean, that's still pretty dang good. Yeah, that's, you that's know, okay. Coming in. And I, I think it's going to be funny just to see the signs that people have for Evander Kane because you know they're going to be some really oh, creative my ones. Goodness. Vegas hates him. Like, it's, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And man, I just thought like that. When that news came out, like one, that's like, how do you let that out? Two. I mean, doing? dude, it's clear he has issues with Vegas that don't include the Knights. Like, you're going to go and drop that kind of money during a playoff series. I know. 500 Dude. But, I mean. He's got the money. I'm not going to tell yeah, people what to do with huh? their money. Yeah, but it's like, got, wow. That's a lot to us. But we don't, we don't, I don't have that contract yet. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, should be a good one. Pump yeah. drops at 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thursday, yes, so yes, yes. be for sure to tune into that one. So really now wild. let's talk some UNLV basketball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Otzelberger, finally, you know, they're starting to get some momentum. You know, they just got a win last night over uh, Albion Christian, I think that's how you pronounce it. 72 yeah. 58, two game winning streak. Jess, you're kind of the beat reporter yeah. around this week. <laughs> yeah. So you were there as well. What's the atmosphere like in the locker room? Um, seems like they're kind of starting to get their chemistry a little bit. Yeah, I mean, slowly but surely, I mean, they're, they're trying to feel each other out, and you can tell they're still kind of not there yet. And honestly, like I was having a conversation with one of the radio guys on Twitter, or I guess, I don't know, tweet back and forth, whatever you would call it. And um, Tweeting. Yeah, <laughs> and like UNLV, yeah, they won the game, but it was Abilene Christian, and a you take Amari one. Hardy out of that game, he scored 25 points, and he was like killer. And he's been unbelievable for him all year long so far. And Coach even said after the game, you know, he's been the lifeblood of this team. But you take him out of there, and I'm not trying to talk trash or anything, but like, who on the team can actually create their own shot? Yeah. There's really nobody. And Antonio, I mean, he was lights out in the, the first game against Purdue Fort Wayne, but since then he's gone super cold. I think he oh, was like, I got the seven. box. Yeah, one for seven. I mean, two for eight overall. Yeah, and the team didn't even hit a three pointer in the second half. I mean, wow. that's going to work against Abilene Christian, but not against SMU when they come in on Saturday, Ooh-wee. I think it is. Um, yeah, they have Texas State. I mean, yeah. Any team that they play against, they don't have any games against anyone that's a walk. It exactly. should be, 
because it's UNLV and the history of the program and everything else, but they don't have anyone that's a, a walk right now. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think tomorrow night against uh, Texas State will be interesting to see how they play and everything. That's a game like you need to dominate those teams. Man, and looking at the numbers here, uh, Tillman, Donnie Tillman, 10 yeah. points. Hardy, 25 points. Mm -hmm. He's averaging over 20 a game this year. I mean, three yeah. for four from three-point range. He was nine of 10 from the field. Yeah. He That's crazy. It. Like, I mean, as I'm watching him, I'm like, wow. Like, because this is my first time actually watching you yeah. and be live through a season so far. And, um, you know, you can only learn so much by looking at the stats from the season before. Oh, yeah. Watch yeah, him. Like, go. man, Amari is a beast. And he's in his bag. Like, yeah, like for sure. <laughs> and, like, thank God Otzelberg got him to come back because he was in that transfer portal, you know. Oh, no, he wanted to leave. I mean, this is the thing. He came in. He's from Detroit. Yeah. I see him and his dad are here, and he's got a little brother that's like one of the top recruits mm -hmm. in the country. He plays high school ball here in Vegas. But his freshman year, he was okay. He's a lot of, you know, he looked like an N1 mixtape dude, yeah. left handed. A lot of shake and bake. He's okay. Last year, he didn't start at the beginning of the year. He, he became a starter midway through. And he, you could tell he got more comfortable with the way he was playing. Um, and he, he started for like the, during the conference and everything else. He played okay. And this year, with everyone leaving, I mean, he literally has taken upon himself to be the leader of the team, yeah. the scorer of the team. He's that dude. Yes. He couldn't shoot last year. I mean, oh. like, he couldn't shoot for real, for real. You know what I mean? So this year, his three, I mean, three for four from three. Yeah. Nine of ten from the field is, <clears throat> is ridiculous. Uh, and he's got that killer instinct, too, which is cool. Like, I love yes. watching the kid play. Yeah. I just. He's cool, and, too. Yeah. He, he is. He seems like a really good dude. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, like, he doesn't get, he's got, like, the, um, he's got the, the very good stone face. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't. Yeah, I, I like his I like his uh, demeanor. Yeah, there, of course. yeah, and that's the thing is I think it'll be interesting because he also dishes it out plenty too. I mean, yeah. we've seen a couple times throughout the year he's had some really good assists, uh, numbers at least, assist numbers, and I think it, it's just like Altsberger likes taking threes and then high percentage shots close to the basket, like the mid range jumper. He doesn't like the mid range. No, nah, he's he's uh, a guy by the three, man. yeah, and he's an analytical guy. Like he, you know, he doesn't like those shots. Doesn't want them to take those shots. Wow. Um, well, what twenty seven percent from three point range? Exactly. And that's the thing. That's not going to cut it. You have any shooters? Yeah. So I mean, you gotta like Antonio. One needs to figure it out. You know, he's a mechanical guy. I'm sure once he does get into a rhythm, he's going to start hitting them like crazy. Um, but he's got to start doing that, and then that will open things up for everybody else. I think. Yes. And you can tell as a shooter. He, he's lost his confidence. Yeah. You can tell he's pressing when he's shooting. He's really, really pressing. Yeah. Like, in the first game, when he shoots the ball, you can see him and he's in his home run trot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, when you shoot, oh, that's, that's cash yeah, money. Yeah, he's feeling it. That's the thing is when he's in a rhythm, like, bye, like, yeah. he's going to run you out of the gym. But now, he, yeah, he, you can tell when he catches the ball, he just really, he doesn't want to shoot or he's going to go ahead and shoot it. Like, he's missed some shots bad. Yeah. Like, really, really bad. Yeah, so. yeah. I think the thing that'll be really interesting, and this was one thing that um, on Twitter we were talking, and um, next year when they have David Jenkins Jr., who's a very efficient shooter, yeah. paired with Amari Hardy, Ooh. and then you still got, I believe you still have Antonio in there, because I don't think he's a senior. I, I'm, no. Yeah. Uh, and so you've got Antonio. You have those, those three guys that can score. You know, it's going to be real interesting to see the dynamic of that. And again, like, these are guys that aren't necessarily Altsburgers dudes. So yeah. once he gets more of his guys, he's going to run the offense a little bit different, or not different, but it's going to be orchestrated differently. And I think they're going to be firing a lot more. Like, I, I really like Altsburg. I think he was a good pick. A lot of people didn't like him initially because they wanted some big splash hire or whatever. It but, is UNLV, but, but yeah, yeah. I feel like UNLV at this point, unfortunately, is like, the job that you take, and then you bolt up to a bigger conference like the Pac-12. And you then that's hard to say. I can't believe. I mean, Brian, you've been around for a while, but it's can't, I can't believe it's like gotten to that point. But you know, you just. Well, I mean, if he, yeah. so I don't mean to cut you both off, but like yeah. if he, if he no, builds you and LV back yeah. up, I mean, not that we're expecting him to necessarily win a championship anytime soon, <laughs> but like if he builds the program back up, Brian, you've told me multiple times like how great of a basketball city Vegas is. If you got a winner built in UNLV, then I mean. They're going to have to pay you, and I think they will if they build them up to enjoy See, that's the thing. I don't think he leaves necessarily. Yeah, I mean, like, it, people always talk about Lon Kruger because he was, like, the most recent guy that was the guy here. <clears throat> they went to the Sweet 16 in 2007, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, 15,000, 14,000 inside of Thomas and Mack. It was one of the best home court advantages in the country, especially in the Mountain West, and they would have the Mountain West tournament there. Um, you know, they, they were a perennial top 25 team. You know what I mean? Like, they beat number one North Carolina in 2000 and I want to say it was 2009, maybe. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, UNLV is a program that used to be a, a top ten program, going to Final Fours. They had cachet nationally. 
It's not like that anymore. So, but but they didn't want to pay Lon Kruger. That's why he left. I mean, you had a coach that clearly could have taken you to the promised land. He was just like the coach Musselman that was up there in Nevada as far as accomplished, have, a, have a, an established program. You're going to get recruits. Yeah. You're going to do well. He, they loved him in the community. He was a perfect guy, but they squabbled over paying him a little bit of money, and he ended up going to Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you got you have to pay the guys that are building your program up. Yes. Like, otherwise, you're just starting over every couple of years, and it's like, <sighs> what the hell do you expect to get done if exactly. that's how you operate? I hate to say this, but Otzelberger, honestly, watching that team play in the first few games, mm-hmm. they don't look any better than the team that they had last year. The only thing is, is that they don't, a lot of people argue they don't have as much of talent as they had last year. But um, I, 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 I'm, I'm one of the few, very few uh, Menzies apologists in a sense. I thought, I thought the firing was terrible. I thought they needed to bring him back this year. If they would have brought him back this year with the team that he had last year, everyone was playing together, they played, they only had sophomores and freshmen last, last year yeah, for the yeah. most part. Their, their senior, um, Shakir Justin was hurt. He's at Oregon now, killing it. Uh, <laughs> so they, they had a bunch, like Amari Hardy was a sophomore. He was just okay. Uh, so if they would have brought that same team back with Menzies this year, they would have been one of the favorites in the Mountain West Conference easily. But then they would have done well, and they wouldn't have had any reason to fire him. And they're like, oh, we got to keep this guy that we don't like. Mm-hmm. So, so they, they get rid of him, but they lose a bunch of players. Yeah. Like you said. I mean, no, that's the tough part. Never, the turnover like that, I mean... You're starting over again. Yeah. It's, he was only here like two and a half years. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, logically, they have to give Altsoberger some time. You would think. Yeah. But you would have thought that about the guy that was there before. They gave yeah. him three years. And the first year, when he came in here, he came in as the third guy after they tried to hire... Uh, who's the guy at Texas Tech? Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, Beard. Beard. Beard, yeah. They hired Beard. Then he went to Nick Cronin, the one who's at UCLA. And then they went to Marvin Mendes. All yeah. those guys, think, okay, we'll give you the job, I guess. Yeah, and, it's like you said, I mean, the guy <laughs> they didn't like, the guy they necessarily probably didn't want from the get-go, well, him, which yeah. sucks. I mean, that's a bad situation to be in. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, UNLV. I hope they do well. I'm a UNLV fan, so. Well, are you a fan of their uh, football team uh, right who? now? The, the, is they, they I'm, I'm messing around. Right? That's messed up. No, I, I went I, to the game. <laughs> Because that's where we're going to shift now, because, ah, I mean, you same know. Same way, this guy, I mean. You know, <laughs> so what happens when you're the producer, you know, kind of how to mix things around <laughs> like that. But, um, yeah, you know, we football, 2-8 right now. Tony Sanchez just doesn't seem to have any momentum. <clears throat> um, lost to Hawaii, 21-7. Maybe that was a team that they could compete with. Maybe put up a lot of offense, but only seven points to show. A combined 119 yards rushing. That's what they're kind of known for is pounding the ball. And, they just didn't do it, so. You were there for, I was well, there. Well, there. What's working. going on with football? Oh, I mean, was bad. Man, well, I mean, I, I was like, because I, I, I really, first of all, with all this, I got to say, like, I'm a bit biased because I do really like Tony Sanchez. As, he's hard not to Yeah, like, like he's a, he seems like <laughs> yeah. such a good guy. And, like, we all know where it's going. Like, I, I hate talking about another man's job or anything, but, like, we know where it's going. Look at where they're at. But, like, this team, you had three interceptions in the first quarter you only got seven points out of it and then went to the half tied at seven after three turnovers like what and then you get outscored 21 unanswered points by them and you don't do anything I think they were I got it written down here somewhere they were two of 11 on third down That's not going to win you a lot no. of games. And Kenyon Oblad, who obviously is a freshman now, be thrown into the mix in a bad situation. Yeah. He threw two interceptions, two bad interceptions. One, one of them was six. a pick six that yeah. really got Hawaii going. The other one was in the red zone, too. It was, like, right. close to the – I think they were, like, on the five or ten or something like that. And it, it's like, dude, which, again, he's learning. It's, it's, that's going to happen. But, like, man, it looked bad. He's now – I looked it up just because I was curious. Sanchez is 0-6 in the conference right now this year. But since he's been there, he's gone 11 and 27 in conference play in five years. And his combined record's 18 and 42. Yeah. On top of that. Wow. 18 like and 42. I mean, 18 and 40. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. In five seasons. Yeah. That's tough, man. Ooh. I mean, and again, I, I like the guy, and I want well, him to keep like, his job. What's going but... on? I mean, here's a guy coming from Bishop Gorman, very successful coach. You think? Yeah. High school coach. High school coach. You think you could maybe? I actually look some of his players. I mean, obviously, you know, V is not the cream of the crop, but this is a guy who's built relationships. And it's like if you can get one of those guys from Bishop Gorman to flip it, then maybe start something. But I know it's 
You, you would think. You a lot there, but. Yeah, you know, I was what? actually, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. But. I was talking to one of the reporters from Hawaii that was in town, and he, we were talking about the Hawaii program, also UNLV, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. And he was saying, you know, with Hawaii, like for them, like they have so many, you know, lately you've seen so many top recruits coming out of Hawaii, like big name oh, guys. Yeah. They've um, always had like a good quarterback. Yeah, yeah. And like, but now all of a sudden it's like, oh, dang, like the secret's been figured out, and everybody's coming in there and poaching their guys. Yeah. And for them, it's like, same thing. You get one or two of those guys to go, make it cool to go to Hawaii again. I mean, you got again, you got Bishop Gorman. You got some good schools out here with some good players. You got yeah. NFL talent that's in this city. Exactly. Like you get, and it's easy, much easier said than done, obviously. But you convince them to come somehow, and you do that with, let's just say, three dudes that are solid players. Yes. And then again, it makes it cool to come here again. You get a little bit of momentum. Obviously, it'll probably be bad the first year because he's still got the crop that's not doing great. But you slowly start to build that momentum. And again, I know it's much easier said than done. Yeah, well, but, think about this. <clears throat> um, sorry, I didn't mean to get you No, there, no, you're but, good. I was done. Uh, think about this. That new Raider Stadium's open. I know. Opening. Yeah, so, I want to play in that. Of course, like you have, you, you, you can't sell that. No. You got to get to play yeah. in that brand new stadium on the Las Vegas Strip. Uh, I mean, come on. That seems like it sells itself. It will end on top of that. You got this brand new yeah, football yes. complex yeah, that, too, yeah. that it also sucks that Fran Sanchez helped get that thing going. Yes. No, without him, that doesn't happen. Yes. So it's like, ah. But like, again, you, you, you have the facilities. Year? You've got, I don't think they will. No, I, yeah. I don't think there's, I mean, I don't think there's any way that you can give him that extra year with the way it's gone, going into a new building, doing all of that, you know. Do you need There's, a big name for the new build, for the new, uh, going into the new stadium? At I mean, well, so Mark Anderson from the Review Journal had a pretty good article a Mark week Anderson's or two ago. Mark a good dude. He, he is good great. Work. Good dude, great writer as yeah, well, yeah. Good work. Um, if they didn't make you pay to read the stuff, I'd read more of his stuff. No, 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 <laughs> but no, no, when no. I get my limit on the monthly <laughs> views that you can get. But, like, I read Come the story. On, yeah, and he, he had one. He was like, you know, if they were to let go of uh, Sanchez, some possible names or some ones uh -oh. that would be interesting. Uh -oh. And you and I, I think, I don't know if we talked about this, but like one that was thrown in there was Lane Kiffin, which, oh, yeah, yeah. I think Lane Kiffin for this job is great. Yeah. You said Lane Kiffin for, for Florida State. No, yeah, that's what we talked about for another. I actually one. saw, oh. I saw yeah. Ar Arkansas just on Twitter. They created like their own Lane Kiffin like yeah. page. Like, let's kidding. get Lane Kiffin here. Lane Kiffin actually kidding. followed and liked the tweet too. See? So <laughs> and maybe yeah. you know, is that that might be a little indication. Lane Kiffin at UNLV to me, yeah. honestly, is a good idea. Lane Kiffin in Vegas. That's I mean, thing. that yeah. would play well. I agree. I think. I and agree. his attitude, like I covered him for, I think it was. A uh, year when he was in Alabama, the year that he got fired in is the, it Tennessee. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, when he was, when he was the, um, the offensive coordinator. coordinator, and he took the job at uh, at FAU, yeah. but was still going to be the offensive coordinator for the Peach Bowl game. Yeah, and then, and then they fired yeah, him. Saban was like, "Nah, get out," because he like wasn't doing it right, and he was kind of chirping and whatnot. But like, Lane, I mean, look what Lane's done at the FAU program. He's, they've done well. Yeah. And you bring him here with the attitude that he has, the clout that he's got. He can get guys to come here, I think. He's a SoCal yeah. Vegas guy. He's exactly. got ties from, I, I, honestly, I think that's a great hire. And ties to the Raiders, too. I, I was I mean, just going to say that. Yeah. yeah. He, got, he was the former head coach of the Raiders. The Raiders will be here. They'll be playing in the Raiders stadium. Yeah. I mean, that's a crazy. Yeah. But uh, can they pay him? I don't even think they can pay him what he's making at FAU. It's not a, it's not necessarily a, a bump up in pay. I mean, I bet you they, they could figure out. I don't know what he's making. If only there were a way. If only, if only there were a way that Let's we could see. look that up. You keep talking, I'll look this yeah, up. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, Lane Kiffin in, in Vegas, that would play great. That would really, <clears throat> really play well. Oh, I think it'd be amazing. We need, a, we need like a big kind of, not, he's not one of the best, he's a, like, kind of a celebrity type coach no, he that is. he's known all around. He's you know, got players cachet. respect him. He's and, a former NFL head coach. Yeah. And he's doing it right by going after the last chance U players on Netflix. That's how he's built his FAU yeah. uh, Oh, did he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 so. So Lane Kiffin's salary, 950K. I bet you Sanchez is making I'm gonna, uh, if only the way, I'm gonna guess to say that Sanchez is at like uh, 500. 600,000. Okay. I was gonna guess 600,000. So I mean. So they, they'd have to pay Lane, in order to make that worth his, he lives in Florida. To make it worth his while, they gotta give him like a, a, a 1.5. I don't know though, I mean, you're, you're at a school, I mean. It's a lateral move. Yeah. 
locationally, well, yeah, I guess you, you know, Florida's nice. He's in Florida, Fort Lauderdale area. Yeah. yeah. But like, no, or Boca Raton, actually, yeah, Boca. Yeah, ooh, ooh. Think about it. But the, eating those lobster tails in Boca. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the cost of living <clears throat> is better here than there. Yeah. So his, you said 900, right? His 900,000 900 there yeah. would go more, uh, it go longer here, you know yeah, what I mean? 950K, but 950 yeah. K. They, I mean, to make it worth his while for real, for real, they need to give him like 1.2. Yeah. I think it'd be interesting. I, I mean, I... What is, isn't that where Otzelberger is? His Otzelberger's salary? Let's see. And honestly, to get him, I'm just saying, like, <clears> to get him, <throat> they would have to pay him more than what they're giving TJ Otzelberger. With a $1.3 million average. So... And honestly, he's more accomplished than TJ Otzelberger is. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to pay TJ 1.3, why not pay your football coach around there? 1.5. <clears throat> he, you know, he, and anyone, all those guys have egos. Yeah. You know, he's looking at that like, what? There's no way I'm coming there. You're going to pay me less than this guy? Yeah. Who is this guy? Another, another one to kind of pivot with names that Mark tossed in there was Jay Gruden, John Gruden's brother. Oh, Just wow. Just fired by the Redskins. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. The tie-in with Gruden. I mean, yeah, that's a family great. affair. That'd that's be, great. That would be, I was like, oh, man. Wow. And like, Jay's an offensive guy. You know, he, he was a wow. head coach in the arena leagues, then came on as an offensive coordinator for a long time, all that stuff. I think it'd be interesting. Wow. <clears throat> Yeah, he, those That'd are too funny. Both I mean, shout out to Mark names. for some pretty yes. interesting ones. That was like, that was good. If you if you ever watch this dude, nice job. It was good. Yes. Um, you know who else I heard someone saying, which there's no way they get him. Yeah. <laughs> was um, Urban Meyer. Yeah. No, nah, yeah, people are gonna throw that out. And I, I got a note too in those in naming Lane and Jay. Uh -huh. Mark noted like these are very unreasonable things that probably won't happen. But they're interesting. Those to are talk. great. Those yeah. are both those are great, names. great ones. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, Urban Meyer, he ain't, he ain't coming here. Uh, no, he's not. I mean, but those first two guys, there's no way in the world that they would not be interested in. Yeah. Like really, you don't think that um, that uh, Lane Kevin <clears throat> wouldn't want to move to Vegas to get closer to? I mean, if you give him 1.5. Yeah. I, no, I think he would totally consider it, for no sure. One's, no one's, one, they're not giving him a, a head coaching job in the SEC. Nah. <laughs> that, that's never going to happen again, you yeah, know I what I mean? it will. Yeah. Um, it went down to Tennessee. Uh, of course, yeah. like, he's never getting a job in the SEC. Would he get one in the Pac-12? Yeah. Maybe the ACC or something, you know, you know what I mean? Like, he, he's got to go somewhere. The fan bases, are, anytime anything comes up, the fan bases are all going to jump on it right away. Of course. But, yeah, and, the, you know, the Twitter... Army, they all are all about it, you know, because Lane's so active on Twitter and everything. I think, but I, I do want to see him. Oh, him in Vegas. So, I think yeah. that'd be a great job. I think that'd, that'd be cool. a good that'd be cool. for him. Okay, I like that. Yeah. I like that. So, got some potential coaches down the road. We'll see how it unfolds. But yeah. um, UNLV football, they play San, San Jose State this Saturday. So, <laughs> we'll see how yeah. that goes. And you got um, two more games to at least close the season out on a oh, high note. Oh. You know? See if Tony Sanchez can win that above 20 games maybe in his career. Yeah, you know, yeah. You I hope he does. Again, root, rooting yeah, for the guy with, you know, guy, so. whatever probably comes next for him. Yeah. You know? He's um, the hardest guy in the world to root against. He is. He is. Yeah. Sucks to see that stuff happen, but at the end of the day, it is a business. So, yes. that's, how, that's how, it, how it goes sometimes. Yes. Cool. Well, let's talk about the other team that's going to be playing in that. It's obviously their home stadium, the soon-to-be Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. They're on fire right now. They got, uh, they've survived a win against the Cincinnati Bengals. They didn't cover the 10-point spread. But, Just you know, win, baby. Just That's win, all you got to do. You know, firing on all cylinders. Josh Jacobs, another 100-yard rushing uh, game as well. Yeah. They're on the verge of making the playoffs. They're right there with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, yes. Tied right now. Um, or no, it's the Houston Texans actually that they're um, right there with. So well, they're they're tied for first place in their division. They're just a, um, a game back on the law in the um, win column. Yeah, the wild card is and was what I meant on the. Okay. They're tied yeah, with in the hunt. Yeah, the hunt for yeah, that. Yeah. But um, if they win Sunday, <laughs> they'll be completely tied with KC. Oh man. For the AFC West. <laughs> How crazy is that? Yeah, no. It's and insane. then they play KC in two weeks. Who would have thought? Like, we didn't gain all that I backlash mean, at first, but it's really uh, yeah. starting to pay off. You head into that game at seven and four. I mean, whew, that'll be real interesting. I was actually, before you said that, I was like, man, I can't wait for that game against KC. Man. Granted, I mean, they, 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 have, got, they have to win. They, got, they have to beat the Jets, though. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, they can't look the past. Oh, they can't no, look yeah, because, yeah. I mean, look what happened with Cincinnati. Like, you know, and granted, the Bengals are going to fight. Joe Mixon, it was a home game for him. So, you know, for him going back home at least. Yeah. So, you know, <clears throat> the Jets are a dumpster fire. Um, they should win and should take care of business. But it is a young team, too, man. They the got Jets so many just, did the Jets just beat the Cowboys? 
Yeah, that was like a few Oh, yeah, that was a couple ago. weeks ago. They yeah, yeah. Beat, but they, they did, like, yeah. They beat down on the worst team in that of the Washington Redskins last week. Okay. Sam Darnold's back, kind of slinging the uh, pigskin a little bit better, you know? So. Yeah. But, I mean, we'll I, I, as far as, like, the Jets being a team that stinks, they beat a division leader in the Cowboys in in East Rutherford where they're going to be playing the Raiders. You know what I mean? So, yeah. obviously, they're going to be – they're going to be favored. Yeah. And you always want, I always wonder how teams react when a little bit of pressure and expectations are placed upon you. They had it this past week with the Bengals. Mm-hmm. They got that win, but it was closer than it needed to be. And this week, traveling, 10 o'clock time there, 1 o'clock time here. That's a, to me, that's a huge game. Yeah, oh, no, it is. And I think, though, too, man, like having that close game against Cincinnati was probably the best thing for them True. because it's like a shot in the arm reminder of like, hey, this is the NFL. Like, all of these dudes yeah. were that dude for their team exactly, in college, yeah. and they're all legit. So, like, you have to come to play. Yeah. So, I think that was a nice little reminder like, to have that close game. No, that's cool. You know? that's but true. I, I think, like, you got a good point in going on the road and all that stuff. But I think, look how well this team played on the road. That's why we're even talking about them, because of that gnarly road, like, but you're road season, we'll call it. Forget yeah, no, road I trip. Know. Like, I man. Know. So, I mean, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> no, I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. How about Derek Carr? Yeah. <laughs> Derek Carr, he's at, I want to say he has, what, what a, a 70% um, completion. Everybody was hating on that guy. Hey, oh, John Gruden, is he, is he looking for another quarterback? Yeah, I thought that was the dumbest Me take too. for yeah. so long. Dude was, a, I think, 2016 was a MVP candidate. He was. I mean, look, like, don't get me wrong. He's not perfect and everything, but, like, dude, it, he's a good quarterback. Yeah. You Guess know? who's second in the NFL in completion percentage? Derek Carr. Behind who? The guy who's always there. Come on. I was going to say Brady, but no. No. Russell Wilson. No. Yeah. Drew Brees. Oh, Drew dang. Brees set records Oh, but he for, missed a couple games and stuff. I know, but like, he set records for completion percentage like yeah. three straight years, like over seven. He, Drew Brees is at 75%. Yeah, that is, that is absurd. Yeah. A car is at 72%, which is absurd. Guess who's, guess who's number three in completion percentage? Who should, who, who should not be there? He's a quarterback that's much maligned, but his team is doing halfway decent. I was going to guess Ryan Tannehill now that he's hopped in, but I don't know. No, he's a starter, like all-year starter. Uh. Come on, Evan. That's, all right. AFC or NFC? NFC. NFC. Dak Prescott? No, you would think it might be him. No. Uh, this is a great podcast right he, here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, no, he, I have no, our viewers. He, 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 might be the, he might be the um, highest-paid quarterback in football. Oh, Kirk Cousins? Kirk Cousins. It's third. Oh, He's well, third he, in completion percentage in the NFL, entire NFL. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Is that's why Kirk gets paid, man. Kirk gets paid. I know. Captain. Um, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's like, you like that? Yeah. Right? You like that? He <laughs> sucks for, like, a long time. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, hey, boom, never mind. I'm good. I'm good. I'm a good quarterback. Pay me. And then 70%. it's like, eh, again. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I, if, that is nuts. I wouldn't have guessed that. I mean, I didn't guess that. You did but, not guess that. Yeah. He, this guy didn't either. Yeah. yeah. So, no, that's – yeah, I'm looking forward to the Raiders this weekend, man. That's good stuff. Nah. He's a Seattle good. guy, but uh, – yeah. yeah, we're taking care of business right now in the <laughs> NFC West. Loving it right now. That game against the Niners was wild. Oh, yes. man. I, was I can't wait for the newsroom, too. I had to do my show, and, like, I can't – like, I – you know, I had to keep my composure while it was like maybe one hour till deadline, and uh, you know, they're going all the way to the overtime. He gets super serious. But I was yeah. wearing my Hawks jersey, repping Camp Chancellor, so you know, it was good. But man, Russell Wilson, I think he's gonna be the MVP. He's a real deal. I think he's got it. Uh, if Lamar keeps doing man. what Lamar is doing, Woo. no shot, man, no shot. But right now, who's up top? MVP. For MVP. I say Russell just because of the players that he's had to play. Like, I mean, you got Mark Andrews for, you got Mark Ingram, you got great skill players for Lamar Jackson to kind of help elevate him. But Russell's well, throwing to Malik yeah. Turner, guys that are on well, the practice squad, like you know? But see, also take That's and one weapon, but also <laughs> take into account that like, okay, you got Mark Ingram, but then who else has he got on there? Nobody. Nobody. He's got a rookie wide receiver. He's got receiver. a rookie in Hollywood playing? Brown who's been in and out of the lineup. Uh, yeah. I mean, other than that, you got who? Uh, uh, Willie Sneed, I think. Well, he needs okay. Yeah. But who's his tight end? The Seahawks? Or no. Uh, Mark Andrews. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's the one that's been carrying him uh, recently. He's on but my fantasy the team. Seahawks, so. uh, oh, the Seahawks but tight Seahawks end. The Seahawks had Will Disley at the beginning of the year. He was one, their number one tight end. Uh, uh, but then he tore his ACL. Tore his ACL, I believe. Uh, it was like early in. And then 
Um, he just got this one guy, uh, I forget his name. He just was off the practice squad, though. Yeah, I think he he's wearing number 84. But you are yeah, right, right, though. Wilson doesn't have a whole lot of, uh, he doesn't, and he only has, what, two interceptions on the season? Even yeah. though that interception versus the 49ers was horrendous. Yeah, just um, a little bit more arc on that. And, yeah, almost know, blew the game, man. Yes. But then he got a chance to win it, and he redeemed it. It's like so. you can't give Russell that many no, chances. No, down the stretch. Like the 49ers, I believe, it was with like less than two minutes to go, and they just went three and out like that. Yeah. And then they gave the Seahawks all that time, and yeah. it's going to make you pay. I love I love when people talk about the teams that they, they like. Like yeah. I, I love to hear yeah. whether or not they can be objective. I you like the I mean? Bucks, and we're terrible, so <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I, I can say that. Jameis Winston So is Jameis need to go, or is he, uh, like, <sighs> so, thinking Bruce Arians might revive him, but. So I had, I, I went, <laughs> shout out to these guys, they're called the Buckaholics, it's like a local, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, fan group and everything like that, they're like, they're official, we got tons of followers all over the country and everything. Yeah. Um, Went, they invited me out to come watch them because they found out I was a Bucks fan because Brian actually was making fun of me on uh, <laughs> on the air one night and he was watching yeah, Operation and, Football, baby. yeah, and uh, so Shontown. yeah, yeah, and um, so they found out that way. I went and watched it with him and I had that discussion with him because Jameis threw an interception. It was the uh, the game against the Cardinals. I okay. think it was. He wasn't Jameis, eating W. Nah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> But man, like, I, love I, 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 <laughs> oh man, I hate even saying this, but like, I hate Jameis Winston because Whoa. I want, no, because I want him to be hate. good. Like, hate. yeah, because it's so hate. frustrating. Like, I want him to be good so bad, but he's so bad. Like, he shows you great things hate. and then goes and like leads the league in interceptions and yeah. just makes stupid throws. But he's got all the tools to be a killer quarterback. Mm. And Ken, uh, Ken Bulky from Sinbin.Vegas, he's also a Bucks fan. Every time I see him at games, we all talk about that. I'm getting a little heated here. Uh, <laughs> we talk <laughs> about it. Up, yeah. yeah, right? Like, oh, yeah, man, yeah. why'd you have That's to do that? That's what podcasts right? are about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, so, like, Ken and I were talking, and Ken's like, okay, like, he's got the fear that, all right, let's say we move on from Jameis, and then Jameis goes to, like, the Pats or, like, somebody, and then he just is, like, slinging it, and they, like, fix him. Then it's like, oh, I mean, we got it with. the capabilities of yeah. being a good 18 interceptions. Yeah. Not, not all that great. No, um, what, but like the thing that Ken, the point that Ken made when we were talking about this is the Bucks have a trend of letting those quarterbacks go, yeah. and then they go and do amazing things. Steve Young, former Buck, Vinny Testaverde, Steve also Young. former Buck. Yeah, Steve Young played for the Bucks. He also played in the USFL, but he was a Buck. Huh? He was a Buck. We wow. drafted him. If I, I remember, he, I'm like 99 percent sure we drafted him. But we had Steve Young. Also, um, man, dude that went and won with the. Uh, with the with the Redskins, Doug Williams, also a former Buck. Like we have a terrible track record with this stuff. <laughs> talking about it Doug sucks. Williams. So like I, Doug Williams. yeah, really Doug Williams. Yeah. yeah. So all all former Bucks, all that went on and had good long careers. Wow. How about this? And Jameis Winston, uh, guess who's third in the NFL in yards? Oh no, I'm sure. That that's why it's that's so crazy. hard. That's why I hate him because he that's does crazy. things where he can hang around. So Dak Prescott, number one in yards, his team doing well. Number two in yards, passing, Phillip Rivers. Yeah. Horrible season right now. Jameis Winston, horrible season. Pat Mahomes is fourth. Stats Jared lie. Jared Goff is fourth. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Is these stats, Jared Goff is the fifth highest uh, passing yards in the NFL, and he's having a horrendous season. Yeah. Wow. Man. Tom Brady, Brian over Russell here getting me heated crazy. talking about the Bucks. <laughs> okay. Well, let's uh, let's finish off here with some boxing. Yes. We've got a big heavyweight match or a big, uh, yeah, heavyweight matchup. I'm still getting used to boxing around here. I'm down yeah. from the Northwest. Come on, really, baby, it's the really fight capital stuff, of the world, so. man. We got what what what's what does he go by? <laughs> the champ is here, Deontay Wilder, the Bronze Bomber. Yeah, yeah. going up against Luis Ortiz, a rematch. Um, what's your guys' outlook on it? Luis King Kong Ortiz. That's oh, right. Okay. Yeah. That's also, right. you got to give a shout out to Deontay. He's from Tuscaloosa. You know, I worked you out in that, Alabama. You have so. Alabama ties. Yeah, so. I got the Alabama Gotta ties, give the man. Shout out, yeah. yeah. Now that I don't work there, I can say things like Roll Tide and War Eagle. I can do whatever I oh, want now. <laughs> Although I am a Gators fan, so I mean, I can't really say so any of that. He and I are polar. Uh, you know, we're, we're competitors in that regard because I yeah. worked in New Orleans, so I covered LSU. Oh, okay. So, yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm. So the sports <laughs> office must have been pretty, uh, pretty excited on your end when uh, LSU put that beat down on Alabama. 
Oh, years ago. well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, unfortunately, I actually texted him about that. He was, uh, he, he oh, yeah, <laughs> you really, I was recording it. He started texting. He stopped. My girlfriend ruined it for me. Yeah, <laughs> she, yeah. I texted him. I was like, man, you see that thing went through him like butter or whatever the heck I yeah. said. It's good to see LSU. Man, they're, gonna, they're about to have the Heisman candidate. I'm pissed that I'm not going to, I'm not there for that. Yeah. But they're going to have the Heisman candidate. They're going to end up being in the playoff. Is it, isn't it the Sugar Bowl this year? Uh, yeah, it's in New Orleans. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. They're going to have the national championship game in New Orleans. It's going to be wild. You, oh, my God. You know what? How about this? Fun him. fact. <laughs> when last time um, LSU played in a national championship game in the Super Bowl in... In the Super Bowl? In the Superdome. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. <laughs> in the Superdome was the day after I interviewed for my job in New Orleans. Wow. So I remember I flew out to New Orleans. Then uh, I flew to Philadelphia right after that the next day, which was New Year's second, third, whatever they played yeah. that day. They played that game against Alabama where uh, their offense was horrendous. And mm -hmm. You remember that game? Like oh, that, yeah. was, that was terrible. That's a normal J Jordan trend for Jefferson. them against uh, Alabama teams up until this year. Well, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, your boy Les Miles. Yeah. I liked Les Miles. He oh, was I did great too. at press conferences. He was really good. He had the absolute worst offense in the history of the world. I, have you ever seen this? Have you ever seen this? You watch a lot of football. They used to run this play they would run a draw, like a, um, a, uh, not a, a draw, basically, but it'd be a pitch. Have you ever seen a quarterback pitch to a running back and he runs through the one or two hole? No, I don't think I've it seen It was designed that, that way. It wasn't designed like as a sweep and he cut back. Yeah. They would run it straight up the gut, but it'd be a pitch. I, I was like, what, what, what are you doing? Not good football. That's no, what that is. man. They kept getting all these receivers. I was there covering Odell Beckham Jr., Jarvis Landry. Yeah. yeah. The kid I told you about, Malachi Dupree, the number one receiver oh, in the yeah. country. I remember, yeah. They're going to LSU and they can't throw the ball. Yeah. Zach Mettenberger. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting yeah. kind of heated. Right? Thinking about That's what you get. Then. All right, all no. right let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's back, back to, to boxing. The ring. We, got, we got that big Back fight to boxing. Right. Yeah. What's, uh, what's your guys' outlook? Deontay yeah. Wilder, man. Yeah. Uh, what? 41 or oh, 41 fights 41 0 and 1 with 40 knockouts yeah it's insane <laughs> and uh Luis has all knockouts in his wins no 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 not all knockouts he's got ah, I forget what it was I I, I should have known I was down there today he's got a lot of knockouts too he's a freak <laughs> he's got a lot of knockouts yeah. too not Man. not 40 knockouts like freaking Man. wow how about Deontay what 41 0 and 1 he's got the 40 knockouts taking yeah. on Luis Ortiz I'm going to say Luis Ortiz has 25 knockouts. I think it's I think it's 30 something. 26. Oh dang it! No, never he's got never test me in my wins. boxing. He's 31 and one. His one loss was against Deontay Wilder in their first match. Yeah. Uh, this one's gonna it's gonna be a good one. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but he got popped for uh, steroids uh, multiple times. Then he just exactly. had multiple drug issues. Yeah. Um, he's a Cuban boxer and. If you know boxing, Cuban boxers are very, very technical. They're very good. Like, they're very skilled. Because, you know, they're... And he's, he's listed at... He's I don't a big know, boy. Yes. He's listed at, I don't know, maybe 39... Where's his age at? Oh, Born, he's 40. He's 40 years old. Yeah. He's probably 45. He's Cuban. You know, <laughs> yeah. <again. laughs> that's a good point. I didn't think that, about that. They got whole thing going on. So yeah, yeah. That's going to be a great fight. Well, and two, like, for him, I mean, one, where, how often do you really get a shot at that redemption to try and get the belt back when you lost it? Yes. And two, like, his age, so this is probably, like, your last shot to oh, do it. Yeah. And one thing I didn't know, maybe you know a little more about this, I don't know, but, like, Deontay Wilder was saying that um, that uh, Luis has uh, his daughter sick or something like that. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and so what he, more of this is trying to get more money to obviously be able to help her, give her the, pair, the care that she deserves and everything like that. So I it's like he's got that. that motivation, too, with it. Now, I still think That's Deontay's tough. going to win. He should. But, like... He's motivated. He's also in like the best shape we. Everybody was saying the best shape we've ever seen him. Like I'm oh, still wow. new to the fight game too. I'm still learning a lot of this. But like everyone was saying, this is the best shape he's ever been in at 40. I mean, I'm curious to see because he even said he was like conditioning was an issue for him in the first fight. Yeah. And that thing went 10 rounds. Um, 10 or 11. I think, yeah, it was 10 rounds that Deontay knocked him out with that uppercut, right hook, Ooh, right uppercut. Wait. And uh, yeah, so I mean, this one will be interesting, man. And. Even Deontay said he's like, you can't just go in there and be like, ah, against Luis, like, because he's he so, knows how to box. yeah, he's a very skilled guy, and like, if you don't, then you're gonna end up on your back. And he's like, everybody likes to poke holes at him and stuff and say, oh, he's old and all this stuff. But he was like, but nobody wants to actually hop in the ring. No with one wants him to fight him because they know that he's the dude that'll put you out. He's and Deontay, I respect the heck out of him for going after him in this when he's already got the Fury deal lined up. Look at the guys that Fury has fought. 
Look at the guys that Deontay is fighting. See, uh, I like that. I yeah. like that. Because um, Tyson Fury was out here fighting tomato cans yeah. and not looking good against the tomato cans. Nah. He fought here in Vegas um, twice. Yeah. So, and, and you got Deontay Wilder. He's fighting, yeah, Luis Ortiz. The guy dude, like who almost said, beat him. Yes, he had him hurt in that yeah. fight. Nobody wants to fight this dude. I like the fact that this is a, a rematch. He had a, a rematch with Stavern, a guy whom he won the title from. Yeah. So the first time he fought him, it was close. That was the, uh, I want to say that was one of the only fights that didn't go to a decision. That's the only fight that went to a decision. Mm. And then the second time he fought him, he knocked him out in like 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, like, so he's doing big things. The, cool, the other thing that's kind of cool is that for Deontay, this would be his 10th consecutive title defense. Man, like double digit thing, title man. defense. It's like, <clears throat> whoo, wow. And he's hyped. You yeah, saw oh, him no, out there is. looking like Brian. He was all kind of, <laughs> he had a six pack with the with the iced out necklace. Says the dude the who chin- walks in here, he's like, I'm eating everything in here. <laughs> and <Right>? Chinchilla. <laughs> Forget about that Krispy Kreme donut provided by Mark Andre right? Fleury that I was eating earlier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right. that fight's going to be dope. Yeah, it yeah. should be good. So this Saturday, you can watch it on pay-per-view, MGM yes. Grand Garden Arena. So that does it here. Well, we did it, guys. Uh, Got another one in the books. In, another one in the books. Beyond the Three. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's Beyond the Three. It's my, uh, your co-host, Evan Barron, alongside Jesse Merrick, Brian Salmon. We'll be back here next week, and thank you for tuning in. All right. Cool, bye.